Good morning, and thank you for joining us today for the virtual fair to discuss the Applied Clinical Psych Program. Uh, I'm Mitchell Patterson, Associate Director, Director for Graduate Admissions. We're delighted to have with us today Dr. Gina Brelford, the professor in charge of the Applied Clinical Psych Program, along with our colleague, Dr. Stephanie Winklejohn Black. Uh, before we get started, can the two of you just give us a little bit about yourself, a little bit of background about yourselves? Sure, I guess I'll go first. Sure. Um, so I am the professor in charge of the Applied Clinical Program. And what that means is you'll, you'll meet with me probably first uh, when you come to, to campus. Um, if you have other questions, you can always ask me as well um, after this presentation. Um, I'm an associate professor of psychology, and my area of research is um, focused mainly on looking at um, how people's uh, views of religion and spirituality, be it um, helpful or harmful, relate to their uh, functioning in, in life, either within in themselves or within their relationships. Um, those, that's my main area of interest. I'm also very much interested in resiliency factors. So this hot area of positive psychology and um, so things that uh, focus on well-being, gratitude, um, satisfaction in life, things of that nature. And my, my training is focused on working with children and families. Um, so that was my uh, my start, and so very family systems oriented and a cognitive behavioral person as well. So that's my background. Excellent, thank you. Uh, I am an assistant professor of psychology, um, and uh, my two areas of research are around multicultural factors in psychotherapy. So, how can we help trainees in master's programs? Um, be as culturally responsive as possible to their clients. And I particularly do that around religious and spiritual issues. Um, so for example, in the age of Islamophobia, um, how are we able to work most effectively with clients that might come from a Muslim background, for example. Um, the other area of research ties directly into my clinical training um, as someone who works with college students and their mental health and development. So I look a lot at college student coping behaviors, um, whether that be substance use, um, certain types of repetitive thinking um, or casual sex behaviors to see how that impacts their well-being in general. Excellent, excellent. <clears throat> well, we're, we're going to move into the uh, the meat of the program today where Dr. Brelsford will present an in-depth presentation about the Applied Clinical Psych Program, and we'll come back to you, the audience, once that's done for a roundtable discussion. So without further ado, I'll turn it over to Dr. Brelsford. Okay. Okay, so I wanted to talk to you a little bit today about um, our program, and it's an applied clinical psychology program um, due to the fact that we are very interested in um, the scientist-practitioner model of training, which essentially means that um, after you complete this program, you'll be very much well-versed in clinical work with a variety of populations, in addition to being mindful of um, consuming and producing research. So it's a very balanced approach. Um, our program um, is, is fascinating in the sense that we want folks to, to come in and have um, a generalist type of model, meaning that you can you learn how to work with a variety of populations However, you can, you can certainly tailor that to your program of your line of interest, clinically and research-wise. And I'll talk more about that later. But we really want to provide you with a general aspect um, of being a, a good therapist and researcher, but then you can expand that to be more focused on your particular area of interest. Um, our program, when accompanied by an, uh, an additional 12 credits in the state of Pennsylvania, allows one to sit for licensure as a, um, an LPC or a licensed professional counselor. Um, in addition, some students choose to attend our program and they find that this is a good indicator of future um, doctoral success. So some of our students are really interested in acquiring additional clinical skills, additional research skills, 
and then applying to either a PsyD or a PhD program in either clinical or counseling psychology, and this program certainly sets them up to be in a good position for that. Um, we also, we, we mostly have full-time students. Um, you can complete the program in a part-time fashion, but as of um, currently, uh, most of our cohorts are on a full-time basis, which allows you to complete the program in two years plus one additional summer if you are going full-time. So um, the overall model, as I mentioned, um, is a very, very much a scientist practitioner model, but we also focus on the biopsychosocial aspects um, of the individual. Um, we're very health oriented, which essentially means that we want to um, edify students in the differences related to um, diagnoses. However, we're very much focused also on resilience and wellness and how to meet people where they are. and. Um, and to deal with some of the symptomology that they're facing. We are very much a fo focus on developing uh, therapeutic skills, which includes both assessment and intervention. So some of our students are very interested in um, types of clinical uh, assessments, such as intellectual testing, neuropsychological assessment. We don't specifically, um, we have one course that they may, may touch on assessment, but some of our students actually are placed in the field in which um, they are doing mostly assessments related to uh, neuropsychological issues um, or other types of um, intell intellectual issues. Um, we also have uh, co courses focused on ethics. We really want people to come out of the program with a high level of professionalism, have a very clear understanding of an acculturation of ethics, which means how they're own ethical and, and personal values interact with professional values within psychology. For entrance into our program, we require a few things. We look at the package of the student. So on paper, uh, unfortunately, we only have certain things we can look at, but we, we have to start from a baseline of at least a 3.0 uh, within the last 60 credits of your coursework. That being the focus due to the fact that potentially students may have um, taken more psychology focused classes the latter half of their educational career. So we want to understand how you did in, in undergrad and it has to be a four year degree also. So that's something else to be very clear about. Um, we also require that students received a B um, or better in both statistics, a statistics course or and, and a methods course. Um, and so those are very important criteria that you must pass in order to move on to the next level of review. Um, you also must have 18 credits in psychology or a related area. Some students do have classes that um, when, we, when we dig a little deeper, they might have 15 credits of psychology, but then three credits of something related. And certainly that's where I come in looking at your transcript. We also require three letters of recommendation, which is again, pretty standard. Two must be from um, academic sources, and the third may be from another source, be it your workplace, um, not, not a family or friend, <laughs> but so, somebody that knows you in a professional setting. It does not have to be an academic setting. We love to have a brief statement of interest, specifically why you want to come to Penn State Harrisburg, what you're looking to get out of this program. Um, if you can speak to your area of interest related to research or clinical work, that's also um, a bonus for us. In regards to the GRE scores, we're, we do look at verbal and quantitative scores in addition to the analytic score. Um, we do not have cutoffs per se, but we want to see that students do fairly well in those areas. And then after you pass that level of review, it, we will invite you for a personal interview with at least two of our faculty. Um, that may be in person if possible or on the telephone. And the reason for that is we want to see more, we want to hear or see more about you than just on paper, because as you know, this is an important program in which you'll go out in the world and you'll interact with people. And so we want to understand how you can interact with us prior to admission. Um, I did allude to this, but um, so our program has a lot of coursework. It's, it's prescribed related to licensure at the LPC level in psychology um, at, at Pennsylvania. 
but it's 48 credits, uh, but that's pretty standard um, in regards to program requirements. In addition to that, if you get 12 more credits, then you can sit for licensure. Um, it also, we also require a total of 700 hours of uh, supervised experience outside of the uh, classroom. And this is really where the rubber hits the road, meaning that in the first 100 hours, you work in, a pra in the clinical practicum course. You go out and you meet with folks for 100 hours, um, half of which should be direct contact. And you can talk more about that when, when you meet with your practicum faculty supervisor. The other 600 are what we call internship hours, and they are more intensive, and they can be spread out, out over two or three semesters of time, um, and that's where you get more intensive clinical experience. Mm -hmm. We also, if you come from an outside institution, we allow up to 10 transfer credits, um, provided again that they were acquired at an accredited institution, and they have a greater A of a, an A or a B. Um, as the professor in charge, I would evaluate your transcript. I would I would make sure that those credits were applicable in our program, and they could then be utilized for program completion. Um, as you know, here there's psychology core courses. Essentially, those are just the courses that provide a, a strong foundation in, in our field, and you can see what they are here: um, ethics and professional practice in psychology and counseling, um, cultural competency a research methods course in statistics. We also want you to understand biological bases of behavior, so you understand how the brain relates to behavioral and cognitive functioning, um, as well as we require a master's paper, uh, which I'll talk more about later. We also have clinical core courses, around 25 credits, and those include the following. Um, we want people to be well-versed in understanding human development, Clearly, psychopathology is important, and that's understanding ICD-10 or DSM diagnoses. We want folks to be well-versed in understanding how to conduct a clinical interview and basic counseling skills. We also want individuals to understand different theoretical models of psychotherapy and understand how to work with people in a group setting, so group counseling skills. We also, as I mentioned earlier, offer a course in tests and measures, and this course is um, maybe focused partially on neuropsychological assessment, but in, in addition, it's, it's likely focused on um, intelligence assessments, memory assessments, and achievement assessments, also personality assessments. Um, we also have a, a career counseling course so you understand about career assessment and intervention. And finally, as I alluded to earlier and discussed um, a little bit, it was practicum, clinical practicum and internship. Here's an example sequence. This is the sequence if you are full time. Um, and as you can see here, um, it doesn't look like a lot of classes. There's typically three a semester, and you likely came from a, a, an undergrad situation where you took maybe five or six a semester. Um, I just want to guarantee you that this is a lot of courses. Um, and you will find that it's more than enough to keep you um, entertained and <laughs> edified throughout your time here. And you can check out too in the summer, we do require you to take a few courses also. So you will be present for those two summers. The last fall, your third year, is a, a possible, meaning you don't have to stay that long. If you complete your master's paper the spring of your second year and you're done with your internship credits by your second summer, you may graduate in the summer of your second year. Some students find that to be very, very enticing. <laughs> Um, I already spoke about this, but the, um, just let me see if I can cover anything else. We have practicum and internship, and they're, again, 100 and 600 hours. Um, and the courses, again, are really where you get the experience in the field. You have both a clinical supervisor on site that you have to meet with one hour a week, and you also have a, a supervisor that's a faculty member that helps you with any type of procedural issues, questions, um, challenges that come up in that setting, we're there to support you and help you. And again, that's a classroom setting that you attend those courses and then you go out in the world and you meet with clients. And these placements can vary. They can go from state or private institutions. They are community um, mental health facilities. They could be within, we have a local Hershey, Penn State Hershey Medical Center, which is our medical school, about 15 minutes away. Um, some of our students are placed there, both clinical and assessment work. People work at prisons. 
Um, it's you can actually go anywhere you want as long as there's a licensed person that can supervise you and it's pre-approved. So this is pretty cool because you can um, chart new territory for us. Let me talk to you briefly about the master's paper without producing too much anxiety. <laughs> um, so we have this with we have this term called a master's paper. Um, it's, it's not called a thesis, but it's, it's a high caliber paper that's a capstone experience. Um, conservatively, it takes around a year to complete. And that begins within your first semester in your methodology course, in which you start to formulate a question that's um, then refined and solidified, possibly your second semester. You then, um, you must either conduct a study or you may do a conceptual paper you may develop an intervention or do a literature review. Um, and again, you need to you would need to talk with your chair about that. And that's a faculty member that you select and that they're willing to work with you on a research idea. Um, that may be something that they're working on. They may have a research idea that they can then you you can utilize portions of their of their data, or you may come up with a new research project. It's, so it's a collaborative process. Um, it's very important, and again, it supports our scientist practitioner model. Um, and, and we certainly can share more with you about that when you arrive um, on campus. We do have some assistantships, fellowships, and scholarships. Um, and so just if you're thinking of applying, I just want to give you a couple of, of things to think about. Um, these are very competitive. They are, they are awarded by um, our college. So. Um, to give you a little bit of breakdown of Penn State, we have multiple campuses. We are at the Penn State Harrisburg campus. We are one of the largest campuses outside of University Park. And we have a large um, graduate school, graduate student presence, um, more so undergrads. We still have a large graduate student presence. Um, we are then allowed to um, nominate some of you that are, um, that are very, uh, very high achieving students for assistantships. Um, if you're interested in that, please submit your materials earlier, so no later than January, for us to uh, review your application. After that time, it sometimes becomes more challenging if you're a very high-level competitive student in order for us to select you and put you up for that, um, assist that scholarship or fellowship. We also have been lucky to have teaching assistantships, um, and so if you're interested in getting more teaching experience, we love for you to apply for those. You would just submit your um, your resume or your CV to me, and then I'd forward that on. Um, and you, so you may be selected to work with some of our faculty on teaching. So those are some great things to look look at for our program. Um, in addition, we have other things that uh, extracurricular research opportunities that students can engage in. Every faculty member is engaged in some sort of research. And so if you're interested in research in addition to your master's paper, please go ahead and, and speak with us. Look at our, uh, our bios online and you can check out some of our research interests. Also, if students are very interested in presenting their research, we would be happy to help you with that either through poster or paper presentations at local or national conferences. <clears throat> Excuse me, I myself attend the American Psychological Association Conference on a yearly basis and so that's kind of fun. Um, or if you're wanting to stay local, Eastern Psychological Association or the Pennsylvania Psychological Association. We also have Penn State Harrisburg Student Research Day. And then we also have a graduate research ex exhibition at the University Park campus every year. So those are really cool things. If you're interested, let us know. We can try to help you um, secure some funding for that. In addition, we have this, uh, we have Psych High, which you may be familiar with, which is our Honor Society in Psychology. You can continue that as a graduate student. We also have this long acronym, APAPSH, but it stands for Applied Psychological Association of Penn State Harrisburg. And in that program, we have, um, we would love students to become involved. So the more involved you are, the more uh, fun the club is and more active the club is. And it's comprised of student officers with a faculty member um, advisor. If you would like more information, we have our program staff assistant listed here. Mary Ann Sims, she's amazing. <coughs> Um, we also have Katie Martin, who's not listed here, but we can get you information on her. Um, I also am um, available. If you have any questions, feel free to email me. That's probably the best way to get in touch with me. 
Um, and I'm sure Dr. Winkle John Black would also be open to you contacting her and you can get her information online. Absolutely. So thank you. Right. Well, thank you. Thank you both, and in particular, Dr. Brelsford. That was a really uh, stimulating presentation and a chock full of information about the Applied Clinical Psych Program. Uh, we're going to transition into the roundtable discussion where for the viewing audience, please uh, chime in with Google Hangouts. If you have any particular questions for us, we'll be happy to answer them uh, within the allotted time that's given for the program. But I'll start uh, to keep the program underway. Um, you've shared a lot of information about ACP. Can you go a little further to explore opportunities and career pathways that exist within uh, the program that students, once they complete the ACP program, where are they headed? Where, but in terms of jobs and opportunities and careers, because that's a lot of questions that I get when I'm out in the field. Yeah, absolutely. Sure. Uh, well, I mean, one thing that goes back to that um, research practitioner model that we've been talking about is that students really have pathways in, in both of those trajectories. Um, so it's very typical for students to pursue licensure in Pennsylvania um, mm -hmm. or perhaps another state. Um, it's also possible for folks to continue on um, either as a full-time researcher um, or pursuing a doctoral degree. Mm -hmm. um, so all of these are, are certainly the broad pathways. Um, Dr. Brelsford has been here a little bit longer, so I don't know if there are others outside of that that you could speak to. I think, I think that probably is the, the general gist mm -hmm. of where students end up. Um, you know, I think one of the things I want to make clear is sometimes students, you know, have come into the program by a way of wanting a doctoral degree, mm -hmm. and um, and we all know how very very competitive that is. Um, and so some of our students come in, and then so they they do need that that support to understand what does the master do mm -hmm. for them. And I let them know this degree is very impressive. Also, yes, mm -hmm. um, you can do a lot of what Dr. Winkle John and Black and I do. Um, you can actually teach for us mm -hmm. um, if you're one of those star students right. and we have our students come back if you're willing and teach our 100 200 level courses mm -hmm. so that's something people know really mm -hmm. so you're interested in teaching at for example um, a community college level that's something that potentially would be useful mm -hmm. as well now that might be an adjunct in addition to clinical work but right. if you really have a passion for teaching it's mm -hmm. not out of touch for you mm -hmm. um, also, we are blessed to have this medical center really close to us here. Yes. So there's been some inroads that have happened with our with our students and in, in amazing situations in which they become project managers or they're in, involved in research in some way. Um, part of that too is just, you know, while you're here making connections. Right. So you can do a lot of things. And people from this program come from around the country mm -hmm. and around the world. Yes. So we often have at least one or two international students a year mm -hmm. out of our cohort mm -hmm. of around 15 people. Yeah. And many of our students are not from Pennsylvania. Now, if you're from Pennsylvania, that's great too. Right? Yes. <laughs> yes. But we have people that come from around, because there are not, there, there's a small number mm -hmm. of clinical psychology master's programs. Mm -hmm. And it's a strong mm -hmm. program, mm -hmm. so you can do a lot with it. Excellent, excellent. Um, I think it's fair to say, um, among all the psych programs that we have here, that this is probably the most comprehensive and the most rigorous. Uh, I, I feel that way. I, feel, yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I don't want to yeah. offend anybody yeah. else. Right. Not, right. Yeah, not to take away from other uh, programs that we have here with behavioral, um, applied behavioral analysis and community psych and social change, but there's a lot to be gained when you think about a 60 credit program. Uh, I, I liken that to something of a, an MSW, um, be it an administrative or a clinical MSW. So it's a very, very comprehensive program. Uh, with that being said, we, you alluded to earlier with 100 clinical hours and, and 600 hours of supervision internship. That's a lot. That's really, really heavy. Like, yeah. So um, have we had students convert uh, that experience into, as you alluded to, with um, the clubs and organizations and uh, opportunities to present at professional conferences or publish papers at conferences and presented at conferences at American Psych Association or things of that nature? Um, well, so typically the internship process doesn't necessarily link very much to our research presentations. Right. Um, the research typically comes out of the work with, for example, Stephanie and I, mm -hmm. students working with us. That's, that's not to say maybe you're working at a placement 
in their, um, so let me use myself as an example. So I offered students the opportunity to work in an intervention setting mm -hmm. the past few years. I happened to be part of a project with mm -hmm. another professor. And so they could do an intervention, but also as research based. Mm -hmm. Right. So they can do both, absolutely. Mm -hmm. It's more typical though that 700 hours is very intensive, clinically focused. Right. And that's the meat of that. And then they can, in addition to that, do this research. Mm -hmm. Want to add to that? Yeah, absolutely. Mm -hmm. um, I had a sort of similar thought of, well, they're, they're typically separate um, for all intents and purposes. That being said, uh, a lot of us that are faculty will often talk about how our clinical work will influence our research and vice versa, which is really the the ideal in the field. Um, so for example, in my clinical work that I conduct about one day a week, if I'm meeting with someone who um, has a particular um, cultural background that has me thinking about a research construct in a different way, I'm absolutely going to take that back to the lab I run with some grad students and talk through that with them um, and encourage them to do the same when they go out in their clinical practice. Mm -hmm. So there is that possibility, certainly. Um, right now, in terms of actually conducting research, it does sound like a lot, and it is a lot, um, but it's very possible to do both, so to present at conferences and be involved clinically. Um, right now I have three graduate students in my lab who are all gearing up in their first semester um, to submit posters to the Eastern Psychological Association. Yeah. Um, and what that's done for them too, um, certainly I think all three of them, is it's given them a better idea of what that master's paper is going to look like for them, whether it's the constructs they're actually going to pick, um, or just a better understanding of the timeline and feasibility issues that might come along with devising a research study. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Excellent. So, in the field of uh, psychology as a whole, you know, as, as undergrads, you know, they, they become generalists. Mm -hmm. But as you move up the rank and file, um, what makes the Applied Clinical Psych program special, unique? Um, that's that's different from other institutions, if you will. Mm -hmm. Well, I might be biased, but we, um, <laughs> I, I mean, so I've, I've been here for a long enough time that I've seen um, growth and change, and, and I think that's always a good thing. It can be painful, but it's a good thing. Um, and I think Penn State, as an institution, has a lot of weight in a good way. Um, so, for example, our, our master's program, I think it's very rigorous and it's challenging, yet we care about our students. We're mm -hmm. fair. Mm -hmm. We want people to be successful. Mm -hmm. Um, I often say to my students, I feel like you're an extension of me going out in the world, you know. So it's, I, I try, we try our very best to give you the best education that we can. Mm -hmm. And in addition to that, wherever you go in the world, if you, if you talk about Penn State, generally people know. That's, mm -hmm. an in, that's an inroads, because as I mentioned, people generally, not everyone's from Pennsylvania that comes to this program. Right. So that inroads, it's a great way to join with people mm -hmm. that may not even be in psychology. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, maybe you're talking to a CEO of a company, you know, mm -hmm. that you want to work for, and all of a sudden they're like, "Oh, you went to Penn State too." There's so there's there's great things about it, and we're and the beauty also of our program is we're on this smaller campus, so you will know people, you will know all the faculty, mm -hmm. um, you will get to know all the graduate students in your cohort well. They'll become like second family to you, mm -hmm. um, and you also have the larger Penn State institution for resources. So it's, it's fantastic. Mm -hmm. Yeah, the two things that spring to mind for me are, are two things that when I was an applicant going through programs, I'm not sure I would have known to look for. Um, the first is the smaller cohort size. The fact that it's about 15 people, um, I personally find very attractive every year because that means that that faculty student ratio um, is pretty ideal and you can also work with your students in a, in a closer way, whether that's on a research project or APA, PSH. Um, the other thing that I, I wouldn't have known to look for is to consider what clinical and research opportunities are nearby. Mm -hmm. um, so we have a lot of research active faculty and we have, as Dr. Brailsford mentioned, the Hershey Medical Center nearby. Um, psychology is becoming more and more integrative with the other health professions. We're really pushing toward more of a health model as a profession. And so having those things so accessible and so close by with established partnerships already is a huge plus. Excellent, excellent. Well, it, that alludes to my, my next question, Dr. Winkle John Black, is to talk about health models versus pathology. Mm -hmm. You know, um, difference? What sort of serves as a strength versus a weakness in one, or are they pitted against one another? How, how does that work here at Penn State Harrisburg? 
That's a good question. Um, typically, certainly where psych emerged was out of uh, pathology focus, certainly. So understanding um, abnormal psychology is probably a term you've heard, um, and really a fixation on diagnosis. As we veer away from that, um, our program in particular emphasizes a strengths-based approach. That's why you also take classes in things like career counseling um, and in development to understand what other processes that are, are perhaps a bit more normative are going on for people and where are the stressors and the struggles within those as it is. And so ideally what you're left with is this understanding of the uniqueness um, of, of maybe human struggle. And so students are really trained not to consider pathology so much as this unidimensional, uh, unidimensional part of who someone is, but they're seeing the whole person. That also comes through, I think, with our multicultural courses. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that whole person, I think that was beautifully stated, so I don't have a lot to add. I just think that whole, <laughs> the whole person approach, I think, is, mm -hmm. is really, you know, uh, the essence of, mm -hmm. of what we do. Um, and so, and I think that that's, I think that's not a cutting edge thing, but I think that that's a, a huge strength for our program also. Right. And I, I think too it shows how um, how much this program really has its ear to the ground in terms of what is coming down the pipeline in our field. So where are the values headed? They're headed toward, again, health integration and a whole person model. Right. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. Well, with that being said, with the I call it the CCC, the clinical core courses mm -hmm. that exist within it. You know, there's a lot that's that's wrapped around um, the program in itself, and, and again, the pathways that, as to which students are, are planning. Uh, can we pull out some of the strengths or some of the areas that you really think are really robust as to why uh, interviewing and counseling and theory uh, versus psychosocial models? Why are they important for students, and, and how does that relate to ACP? Yeah, sure. Well, so. <clears throat> My, my perspective is the way we teach these courses is very hands-on. Mm -hmm. mm -hmm. So, for example, interviewing, you will actually do, um, they're, they're not real per se, right. but you will actually have some interviews that will be very much reviewed. You will, this is a bit painful for students, but you will see yourself on the big screen. You get right. used to it. Um, yeah, <laughs> we all get used to that. It's part, just part of the way it is. Yeah. Um, and so you get feedback. You get both. I was speaking about this the other night, positive and negative feedback about, and so we call I call it a growing edge mm -hmm. of things you could work on. Mm -hmm. Because once you go out in the world, there's really, there's less of that mm -hmm. outside of the program. Um, and so that's really important. In, in our group counseling class, we, we want you to know what it's like to feel like being in a group. So I, the really cool thing about, I like about that class is we, um, we actually have students run a group, and, and so it, it becomes two, two, serves two purposes. Mm -hmm. One, both a student can lead the group amongst their peers, but also it becomes a support system. Yes. So when I taught that course, students have said, can, can we continue to meet after the semester's over? Oh, I said, wow. heck yeah, yeah, you want to? <laughs> you know, I mean that, because although it at times could have been challenging within those groups, they learned a lot about mm -hmm. themselves in addition to the skill set. Mm -hmm. So I think the more you can apply it to the self, the more likely it is to stick and make sense. Mm -hmm. so those are some of my thoughts. The hands-on component is really critical. One thing I've been doing in the psychopathology class I'm teaching is I've actually brought in a standardized patient. So it's a paid actor who comes in wow. um, and I write up a script of, of symptoms that they display and they have a whole backstory because again, we're focused on the whole person. Um, and actually the nursing faculty have been really supportive in helping me devise standardized patients because this is something they do in other health professions for learning. And students had you know, a lot of fun, but also more respect for the challenges of diagnosis and what it is to actually be with a person in the room. Um, so that simulated experience is, is something we're working on bringing into a couple other courses as well. That, that's yeah. excellent. That's really excellent. I, I know this is all about psychology in applied clinical psych, but I often think about, and I'm asking, this is a question for both of you in the ways of the, the psychosocial aspect because the psychology is how we think of the sociological aspect in terms of mm -hmm. behavior. Mm -hmm. So how does that act out or being performed with actors in the room, if you will, be it in the classroom and then in real life, what do you see as the impacts that students are able to produce 
once this is all done again because we live in a very very fast moving changing world a lot of things are coming at us all the time but can you just sort of give me a, a quick summary about the again the sociological aspects of, of how this also works hmm. The first thing that came to mind for me was actually in, in working with my students in the standardized patient mm -hmm. uh, most recently. And the thing that they reflected on in their first semester, which is a whirlwind, you're acclimating to the program, you have all these new classes, mm -hmm. you're thinking about your master's paper. Um, they realized that a big takeaway was that they had to slow down. Um, and be present with another person, um, which again, I know I'm, I'm hammering it, but it really speaks to that whole person approach. And they realized that as important as it was to get through all these questions on their paper for diagnostic purposes, they also right. had to listen. Um, they also had to be present and hear um, actively what this other person was saying. And I would argue that those skill sets are crit critical wherever you go, sure. regardless of whether or not you're gonna pursue clinical work full time. Mm -hmm. um, I think again, so, I think it's great. When we teach these courses, we learn, right? Yes. Which is fantastic. <laughs> so one of the big things in ethics that I typically teach is the idea of what we call general principles or aspirational principles. Mm -hmm. And these are basically guidelines that we are in our professional life we live by. For example, beneficence, mm -hmm. non-malfeasance or non-maleficence, integrity, mm -hmm. um, justice. So. I want students to think about, again, that acculturation, meaning mm -hmm. so how does your, the way you see the world interact with the professional? And, mm -hmm. and I believe those, that juxtaposition of the two isn't, it's not necessarily easy, but if somebody comes into the field for the right reasons, mm -hmm. you know, mm -hmm. meaning the greater good, mm -hmm. I think that sociological aspect in going out into the world, it, it makes, it makes everything, it makes everything better. Yes. Um, that might sound, you know, um, a little bit Pollyanna, but it, it's definitely something that we, I want our students to be good stewards in the mm -hmm. world of, mm -hmm. of, of, of things that make our world better. Um, and, and I think so it's, it's, it, it is about the person, but it's also bigger than the mm -hmm. person. Um, and so I think that's vital, vitally important to me mm -hmm. for our students. All right. I appreciate both of you. Sure. Um, we're going to turn to the listening audience to see if anyone that's out there from Google Hangouts would like to uh, send us a question for uh, either Dr. Gulsford or Dr. Stephanie Winkle-John Black. We'll be happy to answer those questions. Um, but if not, that's that's fine too. Um, okay. I would like to uh, thank you both for sure. sharing a wonderful, wonderful presentation about the Applied Clinical Psychology Program here at Penn State Harrisburg. And again, for our listening audience, please check us out. Um, this um, video will be uploaded at the ACP homepage where you can learn more information about the Applied Clinical Psych Program and you can send emails, phone calls uh, to either professor here. Yes, Again, please we, contact yeah, us. Absolutely. Yes, yes. Please feel free to do that. All right. All right. Well, thank you and have a great day.